The world we live in is to be protected by all as it sustains both plant and animal life. Maintaining an equilibrium, environmentalists say, is necessary in ensuring an adequate number of resources for all organisms. This, therefore, implies that conservation efforts must be embraced by all people across communities, nations, and continents of the world. On this edition of Frontiers, we will be turning attention to illegal wildlife trade, a harmful activity which is giving conservationists, environmentalists, and other stakeholders great concern. I am Frama Panyi. Our guest is Benga Kolawale, Head Conservation Monitoring National Environmental Standards and Regulations Enforcement Agency, NESRA. Glad to have you join us on the program. It's my pleasure. We will take an excerpt to chart the course of today's discuss. Two point five tons, approximately two thousand four hundred and thirty six point one five kilograms, and nine billion naira worth of these animal parts are being destroyed, sending a very strong message, particularly to wildlife traffickers and traders trading in prohibited animal parts. In Africa, elephants are a symbol of majesty and greatness, but they are slaughtered for the ivory which is then illegally trade across the world. Only last year, the National Environmental Standards Regulation and Enforcement Agency, Nestria, incinerated seized pangolin scales, pythons and crocodiles, and pulverized elephant tusk and worked ivory as a demonstration of Nigeria's commitment to the provisions of multilateral environmental agreements, protocols, conventions and treaties, to which it is a signatory. Most of these items are not gotten from Nigeria. We have some, but some of them are trafficked through Nigeria, giving our nation a very bad name. So with this exercise, uh, it's going to send a very strong signal. It's extremely important and it's a great message to show wildlife traffickers, people who would bring elephant ivory into the country, to know that it's going to get seized and it's going to be destroyed and you're not going to make any money. Minister of State for Environment, Iziak Salako, takes the issue of endangered species and crimes against wildlife seriously and Nigeria being a major transit hub for these illegal wildlife trafficking is not going down well with the ministry, Nesria, and their partners. Nigeria is sending very, very clear signal, unambiguous, that the government of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu will not tolerate illegal wild crimes. The most recent African elephant status report estimates that about 415,000 elephants remain in Africa today, compared to over 1.3 million elephants found in the continent in 1979, and only 400 found in Nigeria today. Once again, you're welcome to Frontiers. Thank you. Now let's get straight into the business of the day. Now there is the need to not only protect the environment, you know, but also conserve wildlife. What efforts are being put in place in this regard in Nigeria? The name of my agency has been mentioned, National Environmental Standards and Regulations Enforcement Agency. As the name implies, is an enforcement agency on environmental matters. Our job is simple. It's just to enforce anything that is called law, anything that is policy, anything that is guidelines, anything that is regulations. So, and we have some of these policies, law, protocols, regulations, guidelines. We have them both at local level and international level. So, we have the international environmental agreements, protocols, uh, conventions, and treaties. Same thing, some of these uh, protocols, agreements, conventions, and treaties have been domesticated because 
Nigeria is a party to those international agreements. And it is a responsibility of every country who is a party to those international environmental agreements to have those agreements domesticated in their country. That is to say, to bring down the provisions of those agreements as it applies today, to their home environments and whatever the ecosystem is constituted of. So, and in this context, we have a Convention on International Trade in Indigenous Species, Wildlife, of Wild Fauna and Flora. So that is CITES. And CITES has been domesticated in Nigeria as far back as 1985. After it was signed, Nigeria signed CITES, CITES as far back as 1973-74. They call it Washington Convention. So until, not until 1985, before Nigeria could domesticate it. And that is to say, to bring that context into our localities, what they have at international level, what are those things that are similar to that in Nigeria, that is different from the general international uh, provisions. So that convention was domesticated with the act that was established in 1985 called Endangered Species Control of International Trade Act. So this was the first law that we have in Nigeria to domesticate CITES. And not until 2011, after the coming of my agency, the agency came on board in 20, 2007. And as of 2011, we were able to, you know, again, complement the existing ESA, that is the Act, by promulgating or developing regulations. And this regulation was named or was gazetted as the National Environmental Protection of Endangered Species in International Trade Regulation 2011. So... These two, these two national laws and regulations are basically meant to protect our wildlife, especially those that have been listed to be endangered. That is, their populations in the wild has really gone down. And if care is not taken, they will go into extinction. We will not see them again. So to control them, against unlawful international trade. Okay. So these are the, F, these are the first efforts, or efforts uh, yes, that were made to ensure that our endangered species are not uh, are protected against international trade or unlawful act uh, commercialism. Now Threat, you know, or extinction of wildlife is a global concern, you know, and there are environmental laws and multilateral environmental agreements, as you've just mentioned some, you know, protocols, conventions, and treaties, you know. Can you let us into some of these treaties that Nigeria is a signatory to? When we talk of uh, biological resources, I've mentioned CITES. Yes. When we have also Convention on Biodiversity, we call that one CBD. We have Convention on Migratory Species, CMS. Okay. And like some of these, these conventions, they have their protocols. Now, protocols is also an international document that was agreed upon, but it's it is not as wide as in the const what constitutes protocol. It's not as wide as the conventions and treaties. So, for instance, African nations, they can decide to come together and say, from the convention, let's look at our peculiarities. What is it that is common to us in Africa? So let's agree on it as an Africa, so that it's not just about the convention, because convention is... Is international and 
It's all about the global. It's all about the whole world. But we now, here in Africa, oh, we have elephants. It's common to us in Africa. You can't find, maybe you can't find that in Europe. We have pangolins common to us in Africa. We have rhinoceros common to us in Africa. So what can we do to bring out a more stringent provision to the, compared to the conventions? So that's, that is protocol at that level. Then after the protocol, then you have the national laws. So like CBD, we, have, we do have Nagoya protocol. We do have Kochi protocol. So Nagoya protocol is a protocol that decide all that was, that was put in place to control issue of access to genetic resources in Africa. So because we are not an industrialized uh, nation yet, but those industrialized countries, if they have to come to our, to our nation, Africa, to assess, to use some of our products, then what is going to be our benefit from the usage of that fruit, uh, uh, products Product. or our biological resources? So that is why, that is what the Nagoya Protocol is all about. Okay. So we have protocols, we have uh, uh, conversions, we have uh, treaties. Sometimes they are just like semantics. So, but anything, treaties, if you call it protocols, if you call it conventions, call it agreements, they are multilateral. They are things that join countries or nations together. So, what is this collaboration like, you know, with some of these bodies, these international bodies you've mentioned? What is it like working with them? Well, we don't know. There are no international bodies at this level. But there are other international, there are other countries okay. of the nations. Okay. Uh, sorry, nations of the world. Mm. Sorry, permit me. So, yeah. so the collaboration, you will, you the collaboration is more with the nation that you are having similar things okay. to protect. Like Nigeria, we want to collaborate with Cameroon. Because we share border, and along the corridors of our borders, we have elephants that is common to, to us. Mm -hmm. We have pangolins that is common to us. We have species of trees that are common to us. So that is where we collaborate. So that is on that context we collaborate. And when you go to Africa at large, we collaborate on issue of elephants because elephants are found, you know, across the world of Africa, African nations. So that, at that level, once you have a country that's having something similar to you, like I told you, Nagoya Protocol. Mm. So we have genetic resources, biological resources that are common to us in Africa in terms of fauna, that is animal, and, in terms, and uh, flora, which is plant. Okay. So that is area we want to collaborate. Kyoto Protocol that has to do with issue of uh, you know, chemical and the rest and the rest of it, very green and very you know habitable. You know, having a good canopy. Yeah. You understand. So, what type of chemicals do we want to? Oh, sorry, as that is said, that's to do with basic confession and the rest. Of, what type of chemical do we want to allow in Nigeria? Mm. That or in Africa that will not be destructive to our environment. So we have some of these things at that level to collaborate among ourselves. Mm. Then when it gets to the larger world, then that is when we discuss, oh, please, the West, we will not like the West to come in this regard to assess social things from Africa and this area, but rather, this is our laws, this is our do's, do's and do's. So please, if you want to come to Africa to assess it, this is what we have agreed in Nigeria. And that's, it's, it's, it's more of mutual uh, consent between uh, uh, nations of the world. Okay. Mr. Kola Ole, we'll take a short break now. We will come back and continue the discussion. This is Frontiers, and we're taking a look 
at the illegal wildlife trade. The conversation continues shortly. Glad to know you're still there. The discussion continues. Let's pick up from where we stopped on, before we went on the break. Now, you mentioned CITES earlier. You know, CITES trade, at a point, Nigeria was suspended from being a part of that trade. But it was lifted, the suspension was lifted, of course, um, in 2011. Of course, through a well-coordinated effort of interagency committee on CITES enforcement in Nigeria. Can you tell us what led to this suspension? The Honorable Minister of Environment, when we uh, the, carried out the national project in the disposal of the ivories that are under the custody of uh, the agency, he did read in his keynote address mm. how Nigeria was suspended, and uh, it is not anything other than the uh, gaps that was there in the enforcement of our wildlife laws that led to, you know, excessiveness in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the trade of our wildlife species in Africa or in Nigeria. Mm. And this, this, these products are being traded across the ports and border ports of the country going into the western world, Asian part of the nation of the of the world, without any regulations. Okay. And the convention does not allow that because why before anything can move out of a particular country to another country, the provision by site is, is that the country of origin must be able to issue a permit okay. on on that thing that is meant to be traded upon across the ports and borders of the country to another nation. So where those things are done unlawfully or illegally, that is without all these permits, permission, permission and mm -hmm. issuance of permit, then it calls for concern. So for so many years before, before the suspension came about, that was around 2006, thereabouts. Because as, as 2011, it was a six year old uh, suspension in international trade to Nigeria. So, before that time, suspension came on board. The, 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 the nations, societies, they have discovered the, the lacuna in our enforcement. That uh, th these things are just moving out of the country without any permits, and uh, it seems not to be regulated. So, and to discourage that, that was the reason why Nigeria was placed on suspension that anything that comes from Nigeria will not be acceptable in any part of the world as relates to animal products or plant products. Mm. So until 2011, after the coming of the agency, before Nigeria was created or established, Nigeria used to have FEPA. Federal Environmental Protection Agency. Mm -hmm. It was FEPA that was metamorphosized into Ministry of Environment in 1999. So it, between 1999 and the time of creation of Nestria, the enforcement, uh, the enforcement of relevant environmental or wildlife laws was almost totally, uh, totally at zero level. Okay. Because the Ministry of Environment is a policy organ of government, policy maker. Yeah. So there was no distinguished enforcement arm of government on this issue of wildlife in that, for that period, okay. between 1989 and 2007 when Nigeria was created. So within that period, we had that gap. So that was what led to the suspension. Okay. So after the coming of the agency in 20, 2007, then by two, so the agency had to look at this issue because we can continue in that 
line. It, 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 it does, of course, put the nation in the dark. Bad light. Bad light, the dark uh, situations yeah. among the nations of the world. So what can we do to have our seat back yeah. in the committee of CITES? So that was what led to all those actions that were taken then. And uh, through the good collaboration between the agency and the Honorable Minister of Environment then, yeah. so we're able to come up with the strategies. Among those strategies before the regulation came on board was how to relate with the, the World Secretariat to CITES, yeah. the National Secretariat of CITES in Geneva, and to consult the Secretariat. This is what, these are the things Nigeria wants to put in place and how we want to put in place. So we related, the agency related with the secretary then, and we were able to come up with some of those strategies, like the development of the regulation I said earlier on. Yeah. And the regulation was, was sent to the uh, secretary, I said secretariat, for them to peruse it, vet it, and look at the standards. This regulation was, was called at category one. And after then, then the site secretarial delegates were invited to Nigeria to come and conduct workshop to interagency committee okay. that were formed at that time. And that committee comprised of, of course, Nesha was okay. the chairman then okay. of that committee under the supervision of the Honorable Minister of Environment mm. and uh, comprised some of the other organizations that have mandates that relates to environment and at the same time enforcement. Okay. So this committee we carried out carried out mass uh, what we call mass uh, shisha raid of uh, corners where people are illegally trading on some of this wildlife just to show to the world the seriousness of the nation. Okay. And on that note we were eventually uh, granted a, a lifted or suspension <laughs> of the... All right. Yeah. Now, Nigeria has been identified as one of the four poaching hubs in Africa and also a major transit hub, you know, for illegal wildlife trafficking due to its porous nature of, you know, nations' international borders. Can you briefly, you know, quickly summarize to us what measures are being put in place to address this headlong we have uh, National Stakeholders Forum okay. aim at uh, combating uh, wildlife uh, and forest crime in Nigeria. We have collaborations, open collaborations to many organizations, especially those ones that are uh, in ports and border posts of the country. Then we have international developed partners that we collaborate with, that United, uh, that UNODC, the US Embassy, and the rest of them. Some of these international developed partners, they assist us in periods we build capacities, okay. and at the same time, you know, coming up with documents that are strategically developed to combat illegal wildlife and forest crime in Nigeria. Okay. They build their capacity in the area of uh, enforcement, investigations, and uh, even the prosecutions okay. to make sure that we are able to curtail the, these excesses that are coming from uh, scrupulous individuals mm. that want to legally take our resources out of it the shore of the Nigeria. Mr. Kola Wale Benga Joshua, it's really been a pleasure talking with you and it's been really enlightening. Thank you for coming on the program. On this edition of Frontiers, we had been taking a look at the illegal wildlife trade and efforts to address the problem in Nigeria. And our guest has been Benga Kola Wale, Head Conservation Monitoring National Environmental Standards and Regulations Enforcement Agency, NESRA. I am Frama Panyi. <laughs>